Jerry, you ride Adonis on Sunday. He's backing up from last week. You didn't ride him, but you would have seen that race. What did you think of that run? Yeah, last start he, he went third and he finished off very good. And and this time uh, my boss won, won the 10 pounds cam and it's, it would help him a lot. And cast five, yeah, I think it's a very nice chance, yeah. Looking at the way that he finished off last week, does it give you confidence with him stepping up to 1,400 metres? Sure, I think step up is definitely will help him because he is uh, he, he not a uh, uh, on pace horse. He, if, if more 200 metres, I think he can finish off more better. And when you look at him as well too, I know you didn't ride him last week, but you rode him a few starts ago when he was on the dirt. What did you learn about the horse that day? Um, he's a uh, different horse, uh, like um, he can't upset him and need to be very gentle with him and if if very gentle to him and he will he will try try his, his best yeah and this is the start of your first full season here in Hong Kong of course you came in the middle of last season back from Australia what are your hopes for this new season Jerry um, I hope I can win a lot of winner this season and and very looking forward and and yeah just try to get more opportunity and and yeah Zach Regency Master, what did you make of his win last time out? I thought it was uh, a solid effort. He'd been working his way towards putting a performance like that together. He, he was a little bit weak, um, you know, just took a little bit of time and he just needed to get up over a little bit of ground as well. But he finally started to work better and got more comfortable and then went to the races and produced. Looked like a pretty straightforward win in terms of when you asked him for his effort, he responded well. Yeah, it was probably the first time he's actually got out of the gates uh, as comfortably as he did and been able to travel like he did in the run. The pace really suited him. He was in a nice rhythm and, you know, it, it all unfolded well for him. Um, but he still had to do it. And he's a young horse that's going to continue to improve. You've ridden him both in his work and also a recent trial leading into his run back this season on Sunday. How do you feel he is? I think he's going well. He's, he's certainly at the same level that he was for that race last season. Um, and, you know... That's probably all he needs to be in to be competitive again. And you mentioned in that last race the pace suited him. There doesn't look to be a heap of pace though this time around. Would that concern you? Possibly. It could get him up on the bridle a little bit and, and uh, out of his comfort zone. He might exp uh, you know, use a little bit too much energy. But um, you know, his brain's getting better as, as time goes on and you know, maybe he can adapt to it. And coming into the weekend, you're coming off a huge Wednesday night, a four-timer. Congratulations on that. I know you've won all the big races here at Sha Tin, but do you ride your best at Happy Valley? <laughs> uh, it's a tricky track. You know, you need a lot of, lot of luck there, and barriers play an, an important part. And, you know, it's got to get into the right spot at the right time. But the biggest key is just being on the right horses that are able to, uh, to adapt to... Uh, the positions I'd like to put them in and you know sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't but you know I, I do enjoy riding there so I, I, I do think that that helps. Chad Mighty Power, he's a maiden here in Hong Kong but he's fallen away a lot in the ratings. It's his first run for David Hayes on the weekend. You've done a lot of work with him yourself. What are your thoughts heading into the race? Yeah he's, he's been working well, his trials have been good um, and he seems to be very happy in his new environment so um, um, we're, we're hoping he can run well, and unfortunately we've, we've drawn a poor gate, but if we get any luck, um, I'm sure he'll run well. You mentioned the poor gate. What would you plan to do from there? Well, he's a horse who gen gen generally races handy. Um, he showed a bit of speed in his trials, so um, we'll jump him out and see, see where we can end up. Cover would be great. Did he feel well in his trial you rode him in? Yeah, he did. He felt good. Casper Skyfield, he won impressively last time out. How's he done over the off-season? Yeah, he's done really well. Ed, um, I haven't trialled him for this uh, next for his upcoming start because he's got that residual fitness from the end of last season and um, he's had a couple of nice, nice bits of work on the grass and I think I've got him pretty much where I want him for his first up run. He's only had a few race starts, Casper. Is he a horse that you've had to manage carefully along the way? He's had a couple of niggling issues, uh, which we've just tried to look after and, and, and nurse him along. And uh, right now, you know, he's, it, it's, it's a big season for him, you know, so I'm treating him like a horse with a lot of potential. And obviously a type of horse that I would train for the Classic Mile, that's my target with him this season, so he'll be progressing distance-wise as well. 
a uh, little bit of a tricky barrier, Nate, but he's got to learn to race. He's still inexperienced. He still needs to know how to race. So he'll just go back and we'll teach him again, you know. If he gets one or two races wrong through the prep, that's part of his learning process. But uh, the one thing he does have, he has an explosive turn of foot. And, um, you know, once he really gets to know his, what his job is, I think then you'll see a, a pretty handy horse uh, after the next couple of starts. From an educational point of view then, did you like the way that Joe rode him last time out weaving through the field? Yeah, he needed that, you know what I mean? He just got lost his first couple of starts, uh, you know, but uh, like anything, you know, they, they haven't got the experience, you know, you're coming to Hong Kong, which is the toughest racing jurisdiction in the world. They need some race experience to really get them there. and. Uh, it gets harder as you get through the classes because the competition of horses are, you know, the horses are very, very smart here, especially the young horses that are coming through the system. So along the way, he's going to meet some good horses, which is great, you know, but uh, in my mind, I've got a, a very high opinion of the horse. And hopefully, uh, you know, by the end of the season, uh, we would have achieved that. As far as Sunday is concerned, you mentioned the competition you take on in a flame who looks pretty smart, true legend, a progressive type. What's your take on the field that he takes on? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's definitely striking a field with a lot of depth, you know, some really good progressive horses in there. So it's a great, great starting point for us to see exactly where we are. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be very competitive and, uh, and uh, make our presence felt, mate. Joe Hong Kong winning a super season last season with four wins. Can he take the next step up this season? Well, he's done enough to deserve uh, a credit. And I would say, yeah, he's, he's good enough to go up in, in the class. And he's not a very, very much racing kind of a horse. He has every chance and every opportunity to go up uh, once again. You mentioned uh we spoke before about the fact that he won four races last season. You're on board for three of those. What's the key to getting him right in these races? Look, the first few start, first few times that I rode him, he wasn't like very kind underneath. And then a couple of starts later, we realized that he's a kind of a horse that likes to be given a chance. And that day when he won a Happy Valley, probably two wins ago, uh, was quite impressive. He got behind horses and, and he finished off the race in a way that you would think he, he can probably go up yeah, a lot of more in rating. So I would say he's just a kind of a horse that needed that time and he's a year older this, this term and I'm quite excited to, to be running him on the weekend. You've sat on him a couple of times recently. He's had a couple of trials at Chungfa. How's he felt to you? It feels great, he feels ready to go to the races and I'd be very surprised if he's going out there and not being competitive. So we enjoy Joe, how do you think he's going heading into the weekend and stepping up in class? And stepping up in class, of course he's going to face stronger horses but at the same time he's going to carry much lighter weight on his back which is in my opinion is a big plus, he's not a very big big kind of a horse, the light weight is going to help him. and. Um, Based on his last couple of races, I would say he's going to be competitive once again. Have you been happy with the way he's felt to you in his work? Uh, at the beginning of the preparation, I was a bit worried about him being a bit fresh. But David has given him a lot of work, calmed him down. The last couple of gallops, he's, he's been giving him good feelings, you know. So I'm going to the race with plenty of confidence on him. And you mentioned David, this is your first ride for David Hayes here in Hong Kong this season. You've won big races in Australia for David. You also rode Constantinople in the Melbourne Cup for him last year. How important is this relationship for you to build with David now that he's here in Hong Kong? Well, it's always important for us jockey to build relationship with trainers. No doubt the top ones is the one that you want to be closest with. David has been here in the past, has proven to be a champion trainer and it's going to be my first ride and I hopefully I can't, uh, I don't disappoint him, you know, uh, it's a relationship that I want to build for a long term.